Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and thank you for joining us today for the State of the University Address presented by President Tim Lorman. My name is Barb Van Ingen, and I'm the Provost and Vice President Academic here at Concordia University of Edmonton. I want to acknowledge that Concordia University of Edmonton is located on the Indigenous lands and territories now called Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis Nation District 9. The North Saskatchewan River has been a significant place for the Blackfoot, Dene, Nakota Sioux, Cree, Soto, and Métis for time immemorial. We honor and respect the agreements made by our ancestors in good relations for as long as the sun shines, the grass grows, and the river flows. Just some housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, if you need to leave the auditorium for any reason during the presentation, please use the exit at the back uh, of the auditorium just to ensure minimal disruption. Please turn off your cell phones and put them on silent for the duration of the presentation. And there will be a Q&A at the end of the session, followed by light refreshments outside of the auditorium. Dr. Lorman has been with Q since 2003, when he joined us as a professor in the Faculty of Education. He was installed as the eighth president of Concordia University of Edmonton in 2017. During this time, he led Q through a period of growth in the size and scale of our university, in course offerings, research funding and publications, in our student body, and in our overall campus footprint. And before he joins us on stage to share the state of the university, let's hear what Q means to the members of our community. My favorite thing about Concordia is that my professors are so accessible and it's small class sizes and so it feels like a really tight-knit community and my professors care about me. And I think it's just because it's such a small classroom and it's a small community, there is allowance for time on one-on-one. -on -one. I really feel like I've been able to kind of dip my toe into everything here um, and really just kind of take everything it has to offer in a way and build lots of good relationships here and especially good relationships with the profs and the, profs and the staff as well. Uh, it's probably my favorite part about being here is they're able to hang on to some pretty good staff. I really love the community here, especially the sports community. A lot of the women's female teams support each other heavily and just being a part of that program really helps. How many events that happen here that it doesn't just feel like school, but we're a place to socialize and grow as not only as a student but as an individual alongside your friends. This university is a university that cares about its students. We have so many bright minds doing truly incredible work right here at Q. Everything we do, we do for our students. We are so proud to offer an excellent academic experience with hands-on learning. I love that everyone can be themselves here and I hope everyone knows they belong in you. Our student athletes here at Concordia continue to exceed expectations, academically, athletically, and right here in the Q community. We're extremely proud of everything our student athletes have done this past season. Concordia's new academic building is the culmination of a process that began in 2019 with our campus master plan. It's incredibly gratifying to watch the students embrace their new environment and really make it their own. The Campus Master Plan has a few more surprises in store. Stay tuned. And welcome everyone to the Judy Cruzy Student Commons. I just kind of knew that this is where I wanted to be. They really help us as international students. I am with like-minded people and this is where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> Welcome to Ambition, Growth, and Transformation, State of the University 2024. Welcome to the stage, President and Vice Chancellor of Concordia University of Edmonton, Dr. Tim Lorman. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm really pleased that you took the time to come over the lunch hour here. I really appreciate it very much. So thank you all for being here. Uh, I'd also like to recognize our board chair, Jim Gendron, who is here uh, as he is at many Concordia events. Many of you have gotten to know Jim over the last couple of years. It's great to have him here. Thank you, Jim. Now, our university, like others in Alberta and across the country, exists in an increasingly challenging environment. 
funding, geopolitical issues, changing job markets and curricula, and the rise of artificial intelligence are just some of the variables that universities are facing while operating in a period of fiscal restraint and transformational change. Now, as Dr. Van Ingen shared in her introduction, we have grown in many ways throughout the years. And the one thing that remains constant is our close-knit community, and it's one that truly does look out for one another. We create exceptional learning experiences for our students and an inclusive workplace for our team members, as well as a source of pride for our alumni. So here at Q, you find your future. Today, I'll share the highlights of the past year and I'll show where we intend to go uh, in the future and how we intend to transform. So who is enrolling at Q? Well, 80% of our students, unsurprisingly, are 24 years old or younger in 2023-24. And in 2023-24, our student population continued to be made up of 20% international students. This demographic is increasingly diverse, welcoming new voices and perspectives into our hallways and classrooms, and it brings valuable perspectives, expands our own worldviews, and shares knowledge. We'll need to be mindful of how our international student population continues to be affected by the federal caps on new international student study permits. But we want our students at their best so they can take optimal advantage of learning and the overall university experience that we offer. So work is going to continue as we implement our mental health and sexual, and sexual violence reduction strategies here at Q. This year, we welcomed a new gender-based violence prevention coordinator to Q, and we've developed and enhanced new programs, events, and campaigns in the area of sexual violence prevention, wellness, and mental health strategies. And this year was a landmark year for the annual President's Fundraising Breakfast for Mental Health. We raised over $31,000 in contributions to mental health at Q, just in that one two-hour morning session. That day brought together members of our Q community, friends and donors, and it's one of our signature events that raises funds for the Sean O'Brien Mental Health Fund. Now at the fundraising breakfast this year, we were humbled to host Sheila O'Brien, Sean's mother who shared the incredibly moving story about her late son. It was also encouraging to see so many people attend our wellness events on campus. Now mental and physical health and wellness go hand in hand. Our athletics program continues to be a source of pride and growth for Q, thank you Nate and team. Over the past year, our athletes have excelled on both provincial and national stages, bringing home gold medals in badminton, golf and curling, as well as numerous individual awards. With 62 home events between soccer, volleyball, basketball and men's hockey, the success of our teams has been a testament to the talent and the dedication of our student athletes. But beyond competition, our Thunder athletes continue to give back to the community, organising annual Thunder Days of Giving, where they volunteer their time and they raise funds for local organisations. This spirit of giving is central to the mission of growth as it reinforces the values of leadership, of responsibility and of community engagement. Now, as we look ahead, we're really excited to see how our athletics program will continue to grow and transform. Historic success, like our national champion 0405 women's basketball team, who were recently inducted into the ACAC Hall of Fame, paved the way for our 2023-24 women's curling team to raise the profile of Q by winning a national title themselves. Think about that, Concordia winning national titles. We're focused on creating more opportunities to excel both on and off the field or ice. Now, Q's ambition to be a globally recognised institution is reflected in our growing network of international partnerships. Over the past year, we fostered relationships with 92 international partners across 34 countries, expanding opportunities for both students and faculty to engage in global learning and research. Last year, we hosted 12 exchange students from 10 of our partner institutions in this program. Q does not live in a bubble. 
One of the highlights of the past year was the launch of the Chinese Test Centre, which provides comprehensive language profici proficiency testing and strengthens opportunities for students abroad. The centre provides students with the skills and the experiences they need to succeed in an interconnected world. Through programs like the Emerging Leaders of the Americas program, we are also hosting more exchange students and faculty members from around the world creating rich cultural exchanges that benefit our entire community. These partnerships are not just about academic collaboration. They're about transforming Q's relationships and enhancing our position as a global hub of learning and of cultural sharing. Now, the past year has been one of significant growth and transformation for the Office of Research and Innovation at Q. And you saw Carla in the introductory video there. Fueled by ambition and driven by the pursuit of new knowledge, we've embarked on a journey of discovery, of collaboration, and of impact. At the core of our mission is the belief that meaningful change comes from working together. This year, we strengthened our ties with First Nations and Indigenous organisations, amplifying voices and fostering partnerships to support research that drives cultural, environmental and societal growth. Through our continued collaboration with the traditional Environmental Knowledge Association, we secured a grant to advance research that prioritises a traditional knowledge and incorporates it into environmental policy. This initiative, led by Dr Chen, brings together faculty, student researchers and Indigenous scholars, underscoring our commitment to shared growth and understanding. Our partnership with Bears Poor First Nation has blossomed into a transformative community-led research project. Supported by Indigenous Services Canada and led by Dr Matt Fumo, this initiative investigates the effects of environmental hazards, illustrating how collaborative research can catalyse real-world change. And in 2023, Q signed a landmark agreement with the University of Alberta, delegating research ethics board responsibilities to ensure that our research meets the highest ethical standards. Four Q faculty members, two of whom identify as Indigenous, now sit on the U of A's REB committees, representing a step forward in our journey towards inclusivity and integrity in research. And our ongoing partnership with the Bank of Montreal, BMO, has continued to fuel our ambition through the BMO Centre for Innovation and Applied Research. This collaboration not only funds groundbreaking research, but also opens doors for the exploration of commercially viable in innovations. Internal funding at Q was enhanced to support faculty seeking funding to initiate new research, a new research idea, or to disseminate their research at conferences, symposia, or other events, along with streamlining processes. In 2023-24, Q received seven undergraduate student research awards, USRA, from the National Sciences and Engineering Research Council, we all know as SHRC, as NSERC, sorry, SHRC's the other one. NSERC. Two USRA awards went to undergraduates self-identified as black scholars, and one went to an undergraduate self-identified as an indigenous scholar. And Dr. Matthew Churchwood, Assistant Professor of Biology and Environmental Sciences, was awarded a $358,000 NSERC grant for his research into glial cells, of which I know nothing about. But he does. This research project will bring together experts in biochemistry, biomedical engineering, and neuroscience, just to name a few, and showcases how we can take advantage of our small community to tackle big issues and big ideas. Faculty across campus have been hard at work, leading to their number of publications more than doubling in 2023-24 compared to the previous year. And finally, I'm proud to say that this year we developed Q's very first research and innovation strategic plan that will guide our university through to 2029. It was an ambitious undertaking by our Office of Research and Innovation, and it was a true collaboration across campus. This plan reflects our growing and evolving need where we will all work together as a team to drive innovation and research forward. Our Centre for Teaching Excellence created a new framework for instructional experience at Q and excellence. And this included a new toolkit covering a wide range of topics, including lesson planning and delivery, indigenous pedagogies, blended learning, student engagement, 
and active learning, generative AI, and more. Instructors now have greater access to tools that allow them to incorporate universal design for learning principles into their course content, delivery, and assessment. As our classrooms become increasingly diverse, we need to adapt to meet the needs of our students, particularly how they learn. In 2023, we took a proactive approach to our budgeting process. We were in a climate of high inflation, increasing pressures on both our revenue and our expenses, with ongoing pressures of building a new facility and maintaining our current spaces. So today, owed to our strategic approach, we've been able to manage the financial pressures and position Q for long-term sustainability. As an independent academic institution, of course, we do not receive government funding for capital projects. So similar to a family, we need to carefully manage our budget so we can finance growth in the future. I'm proud to share that Q brought in revenue of $50 million for the 2023-2024 fiscal year. And this was an 8% increase on last year. Now, while our approach to budgeting identified the possibility of a reduction in revenue, Q benefited from higher than expected government uh, funds, from higher than expected enrollment, from greater returns on our investment portfolio. Now, these factors all contributed to a net surplus of approximately $10 million that will be reinvested in our university and our students to support future campus growth. In the face of a potential loss of revenue, we were really mindful last year to control spending. Through our collective fiscal responsibility and vision, that means all of us, thank you so much for being parsimonious with Concordia's money, we were able to strategically invest in areas important to Q and important to our students. Now our focus on people, place and purpose is showing in our spending, with salaries and wages continuing to make up the largest proportion of our expenses. Additional scholarships allowed us to invest directly into our students, which remains our first priority. And we've grown physically in a very obvious way with the opening of the new academic building on Friday. Now, while the NAB remained under construction, we were able to save utility costs last year because the construction company had to pay for those. So that was a good savings for us. Not so good in other ways. Since undertaking the NAB project, our asset to liability ratio has decreased as we invest more into campus development. This was expected due to our planned investment strategy. Day's cash on hand is similar to an individual's emergency fund. Like our asset liability ratio, you can see this number steadily decreasing since March of 2021. We remain in a healthy position despite having just opened the new academic building for the 2024-2025 academic year. But our residence capacity has not grown significantly for decades, and we've heard loud and clear from our students that we need new and modern residence spaces on campus. Now I'm pleased to share that we have completed the design stage for a new student residence with plans for construction starting in spring 2025. So while this year's surplus is welcome, we cannot take it for granted. We need to replenish what has been invested so we can grow Q in a fiscally responsible way that meets the needs of our current and our future students. But how do we know that we're serving our students well? Well, through the Canadian University Survey Consortium, or CUSC survey, which surveys first year, middle year, and graduating students in alternating years, we are able to gain an understanding of their needs. This year, graduating students were surveyed and 148 participated in the survey. Thanks to our long-term participation in these surveys, we have historical data to compare ourselves to, and it's clear we have work to do. For overall satisfaction, we're in line with universities across Canada, including in our peer group. While the vast majority of respondents are at least satisfied with their time at Q, we do see that the portion of students who are very satisfied is on a steady decline. We're also on par with the national average for how students perceive the personal connections they build with their professors. However, we are lagging behind other similar universities. This group has been through some unique challenges as students, including the global pandemic and a faculty strike. 
And we can see the results of those challenges here, with our scores falling from the 2021 group. Students are becoming increasingly demanding of their post-secondary institution to provide exceptional experience, and we're no different. So we're seeing this overall score slip right across the country. CUSC findings show a decline in students' willingness to recommend Q and to promote our brand. And at the same time, there's an increase in people who are more likely to damage our brand through negative word of mouth. Post-secondary areas across Canada face similar challenges, and we recognise that we have to make up some ground. Students are more demanding of their universities. As costs rise, they expect the quality of services, of their education, and of their experiences to increase. What we hear our students are telling us, we hear what our students are telling us, you will hear our plans for the future in a few minutes. We will find our edge, we will celebrate it, and we will strive to excel with our strengths on the national stage. When students demand exceptional experiences, we cannot settle for average, and we won't settle for average. To grow and be competitive with the post-secondary market in Edmonton and Alberta, we need to continue to develop distinct program offerings that meet the needs of students and capitalise on our strengths at Q. This past year, we've developed proposals for eight new specialisations in existing degree programs that will both meet student demand and labour market needs. These proposals are, of course, in various stages of development and approval. Through the past year, we're proud to say we've continued to reduce the financial barriers to success for students at Q by increasing direct financial aid and by increasing the awareness of the financial supports that are available to our students. Last year, we increased our budget for bursaries or needs-based funding by 10% and we awarded the full amount of $110,000 to eligible students. We also increased our athletic scholarship budget by 6%. Our, graduated, our graduate students last year were supported by $210,000 in provincial funding more than doubling the amounts in 2022-23. Additionally, we were able to fully utilise our tri-agency funding from NSERC and the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council, SHRC, for graduate students. To minimise other cost barriers for students, we continue to add high quality academic open access titles to our library collection. And we've continued to replace physical textbooks with electronic options adding another 41 textbooks to that list. And we've just continued to support the directory of open access journals through funding to the Global Coalition for Open Social Sciences Services. Now across Canada, there continues to be steady growth in the number of students enrolled in post-secondary institutions. In June 2024, the Conference Board of Canada projected there will be over 2.6 million students enrolled at post-secondary institutions across Canada. Alberta's post-secondary environment is extremely competitive with a complex landscape of 26 post-secondary publicly funded institutions. In 2023-24, for the third consecutive year, we saw a decrease in our enrolment. Our student headcount fell from an all-time high of 3,320 students in 2019-20 to 2,859 in 2023-24. We had actually forecast a steeper decline than this. So kudos to our recruitment team who attended more than 400 events last year to attract students to Q and so far have, a, have planned to attend 300 just this fall alone. So some of our programs are considered best in class and these set Q apart. And these include the Masters of Information Systems Security Management program, which had a growth of 147% <laughs> last year, and the Master of Information Systems Security Management program, which saw a growth of 37%. Q's after degree in elementary education saw over 90% of students receive a full-time contract after graduation. Pretty good results. Now it's imperative that we all champion an inclusive campus where all of our students, faculty and staff feel they're welcomed and feel that they belong. 
A couple of notable strides we've made through this past year include revising our equity, diversity and inclusion framework to recognise the ongoing impact of historical atrocities and adopting and upholding the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's definition of anti-Semitism. Revising our sexual violence policy to a gender-based violence policy and procedures in consultation with staff, with faculty, with students and with other Alberta PSIs to align with Courage to Act, which is a federally funded initiative to address and prevent gender-based violence in Canadian universities and colleges. Our recruitment team has made specific efforts to visit and speak with community groups, programs and schools that support Indigenous students, members of immigrant and refugee communities, black students, students with disabilities and students requiring accommodations and other vulnerable communities. Now at Q, we've connected Indigenous pathways, we have connected Indigenous pathways, including an Elders Advisory Council, the Q Indigenous Fellowship and Partnership and Student Outreach. We've made many strides in our individual and collective journeys of truth and reconciliation, which requires continuous learning, respect and understanding. Last week, many of you were able to attend the, the official launch of Kahiwak Kapimahachik, and this was a cul culmination of a renaming and rebranding effort for our Indigenous Student Services Centre. That name, Kahiwak Kapimahachik, translates to where the eagles fly. The centre plays a tremendous role in, gather in being a gathering place and a safe space for many of our Indigenous students and Q community members. It's a gathering place that has seen an increased reach with Q's Indigenous student population. With its official launch, I encourage you to visit Kahiwak Kapimahachik to learn more. I expect more will visit the centre in the months to come. I certainly love spending time down in that centre. It is so welcoming. You'll be really welcomed if you go down and say hi. Now, ultimately, our students want a career. And it's our goal to ensure that their educational experience prepares them to be successful in their chosen field. We pride ourselves in providing work integrated learning and helping our students gain hands-on experience to build valuable skills. We know that career focused learning and skill building is important for our students. So we continue to transform our offerings to meet their needs. And we've added more work integrated learning pieces to our programs, offering it in more than half our programs today and hoping to build even further in the future. Research is another area that offers tremendous opportunities to gain incredible and valuable hands-on experience. On top of the skills they gain, they build important relationships and mentorship experiences that they will take into their further studies and into their careers. Now, as the labour landscape continues to evolve, our graduates are also finding new and different work. As we move towards the future, we'll be guided by strategic plans and an operational framework that has five key goals to drive our efforts in the coming years. So this is the future bit. This is the direction this is the bit we attend to. This is what the next three years are going to be all about at Q. First one, sustainable growth, expanding our enrollment, revenue and advancement efforts to ensure long term success. We've had a dip in enrollment. We need to fix that. This includes strengthening our relationship with our donor community to best explore and to capture collaborative opportunities. The second one, Enhancing the student experience. The CUSC told us that we need to improve our services and our resources, and we need to offer them in order to create an exceptional learning environment. That involves all of us. We need to deliver academic and research excellence. That's the third point, delivering academic and research excellence. And these are continuing to innovate and grow our academic and research programs. We have a great academic plan. We have a great research and innovation plan. We're going to execute on those. That's how we're going to accomplish that. Number four, offering an outstanding employee experience. We want to try to better support the growth and development of our faculty and staff. And the final one, number five, is strengthening our governance and our management practices. We want to ensure 
that our leadership is aligned with our goals for growth and for transformation. Our new Business Advisory Council will enhance our capacity to strategically respond to students, faculty, institutional partners, and the broader community to drive and sustain long-term growth. These goals are ambitious, but they are achievable. By staying focused on our core values and embracing the opportunities ahead, we will continue to grow and transform as an institution. Q is on the cusp of something great, and together we will realise our potential. Now, as we continue to grow, we recognise that we need to enhance our brand and we need to enhance our reputation. Over the past year, we've embarked on a comprehensive review of our brand strategy, working with expert, experts to review our brand, social media channels, and communication to better understand the unique value that Q offers. One of the key challenges we face is the confusion surrounding the name Concordia. Did you know there are over 30 universities in North America called Concordia? Additionally, some still perceive Q as a faith-based institution, despite our transition to a secular university in 2015. The central focus is, is going to be on building engagement with, of Q and knowing that our, what our value proposition is. We have distilled it into four areas, student experience, academic excellence, community and connectivity, and an inclusive, diverse, and accessible university experience. Our refreshed brand will highlight the core strengths of Q and communicate these values to a wider audience. So, in the next year, you will see the following activities. You'll see a social media and a traditional media campaign about Q. And we're using Q because Concordia is 30 other places. 29. We're using Q. So everyone just use Q, feel free. Q, I work at Q, it's wonderful. Community and stakeholder engagement, including strength and collaboration with our alumni association. You'll see ro a rollout of something we're calling a word mark, which is a sort of a logo. You'll see that today. That's on our digital platforms, including our website. The launch of a new recruitment campaign called simply Accepted. And this will highlight both our welcoming community our flexible programs, and our desire to have students come and be accepted at Concordia. The launch of Q into the market, including a full brand campaign and an updated logo. So I'm pleased to share with you today our new word mark, which builds on our existing identity by using the same flowing element represented, representing our close location to Edmonton's River Valley, and that is it. It has a strong collegiate feel and it's easy to read and understand. So you'll start to see it all over the place in the coming months and you'll have something in hand when you lead this, leave this auditorium with which to demonstrate your Q pride. The transformation of our image is not just about marketing, it's about making our institution more recognisable and relatable to our community and to our stakeholders. As the post-secondary landscape is increasingly competitive, a strong and distinctive brand helps Q to stand out from other institutions, attracting students, faculty and partners, resonating with our values and our mission. A refreshed brand can reinvigorate the connection our university has with our stakeholders, inspiring a sense of pride and belonging, and encouraging greater engagement and loyalty, we are, which are crucial for Q's long-term success and support. It's a tangible reflection of Q's transformation and modernization. In essence, it's not just a visual update. It's a strategic tool that communicates Q's ambition, growth, and transformation. Now, as I conclude this State of the University address, I wanna leave you with a vision of the future. It's a future where Q is not just growing in size, but transforming in substance. And I would say the latter is more important than growing in size, transforming in substance. It's a future where our ambition drives us to new heights and our commitment to excellence ensures that we remain a leader in education, innovation, and promoting active citizenry. We've already taken significant steps towards this future. 
our new academic building, which will be officially open during this weekend's homecoming celebrations, is a symbol of our strategic and sustainable growth. It represents our commitment to providing our students with the best possible learning environment, one that supports their academic journey and their personal transformation. As we look ahead, our plans for a new student residence will further enhance our campus, providing much needed housing for our growing student body. The project, like all of our initiatives, is driven by our desire to create a campus that fosters both personal and institutional growth. But beyond the physical challenges, the true transformation is happening in the lives of our students and our faculty and our staff. It's happening in the classrooms, the labs, and the community spaces where ideas are shared, knowledge is gained, and futures are shaped. So as we celebrate the achievements of the past year and look forward to the opportunities ahead, I invite you all to embrace the ambition, growth, and transformation that define Q. This includes attending homecoming, please, this weekend. It's gonna be a blast. Friday night, Saturday, so much fun. You should come with your families, with your dogs, with your friends. Sometimes your dogs are your friends, <laughs> if you're Carmen. <laughs> Please come out wearing your Q colors, the yellow and blue. Use your new Q sticker, very exclusive Q sticker that you're going to be getting on the way out, and sharing why Q is so important to you. So together, we'll build a future that is bright, bold, and full of promise. Thank you, and I look forward to any questions that you may have.